The Vinland sagas are stories of Viking journeys made to a land called Vinland around 1000 AD. They were first written down in Iceland in the 13th century and were based on oral stories passed down over the centuries. To most scholars of the 19th century, the sagas were widely assumed to be a work of fiction. It was only in the 20th century that serious consideration was given to verifying them as factual accounts. The result of this research was the discovery of a Viking site in Newfoundland in the 1960s. But Vikings were not the only characters in the sagas. The sagas tell of a people called Skraelings, the indigenous people of Vinland, who the Vikings traded with and warred against. If Vinland was somewhere in present-day Canada, then the Skraelings were Native Americans, possibly Beotuk or Iroquois. So what about Native American oral traditions of encountering Viking visitors? Do any exist? And if so, Shouldn't we give the same weight to these tales as we do to the Vinland sagas? There is only one such Native American tale that describes white men in the north before the Age of Discovery. The tale of the Kingdom of Saguenay. French explorer Jacques Cartier made voyages to explore the St. Lawrence River region of what is today Canada in 1534, 1535, and 1541. Cartier was not the first white man in the waters of the St. Lawrence. The Basque and English had been fishing and hunting whales there, possibly even before Columbus discovered the West Indies. But Cartier was the first person to describe in detail his experiences with the Iroquois Indians in this region. And unlike the adventurous fishermen that frequented the region, his primary goal was exploration. His detailed notes were written like an ethnographer, and detail many customs and mannerisms of the natives. He recorded three independent tales of a kingdom called Saguenay. It was on his second voyage that he first learned of the kingdom of Saguenay, from two natives that he had captured on the Gasp Peninsula on his first voyage. They had become his guides and translators. They told that two days journey from Anticosti Island could be found the kingdom of Saguenay. And from this land comes what they call Kegneldas, metals, iron, copper, and lead. As Cartier sailed westward, he reached the Iroquois village of Stadacona what is today Quebec City. The chief of this village was named Donnacona, and Cartier soon built a good relationship with him. But Cartier wanted to continue exploring upriver. He headed west in smaller boats to the village of Hochelaga. Here he found a fortified town below a small mountain he called Mount Royal what would later become the city of Montreal. Cartier attempted to gather information on the territories that lay beyond the village, even though he lacked a proper interpreter. It was at this time that a native grabbed the silver chain that hung Cartier's whistle around his neck and a polished brass dagger handle. He indicated that objects like these came from up the Ottawa River, from the land of the Agu Judah a word that means bad people. These people were heavily armed, wore wooden armor, and waged incessant war. Could these have been descriptions of Vikings, who according to the sagas, battled against the natives with their steel axes and swords? Cartier then showed them a piece of copper, and asked if this also came from the land of the Ago Judah. And they said no, it came from Saguenay, Cartier then returned to Stadacona and learned more details about the kingdom of Saguenay from Donnacona and other prominent natives. As the tale goes, 
The kingdom of Saguenay lies a moon's journey up the Saguenay River, far to the northwest. But also noted that the more direct and safer route is from a tributary of the St. Lawrence River that flows from the north beyond the village of Hochelaga. He told Cartier that the people of Saguenay are as white as the French and wear woolen clothes, that the towns are composed of honest men who possess great stores of gold and copper. The kingdom is an island, and beyond it a tributary flows through two or three broad lakes until a freshwater sea is reached. Saguenay was the only story they were told of a land of white men in the Americas. And of course this story could have been fabricated to appease Cartier's desire for information. But it seems like a strange coincidence that Saguenay lies somewhere in the St. Lawrence River region, the same region that has all the characteristics of Vinland. One-legged men, also known as Siopods, were pervasive in medieval art and mythology, which are often represented relaxing on their back and sheltering themselves from the sun with their massive foot. A tale of a Siopod exists in Eric the Red's saga, where a one-legged man was spotted near Vinland. It darted down from a clearing to the shore where the ship was anchored and shot an arrow into Eric the Red's son. He withdrew the arrow but died shortly after. They pursued the Siopod as he hopped north, but soon lost him. The region where this incident occurred became known in the sagas as the land of the one-legged. Donnacona told Cartier that he had been to a region where men have only one leg. It is very possible that both the Viking and Native Americans independently invented a similar monster. But it is also possible that the two stories share some unknown common bond. It is too much of a coincidence to ignore. The mouth of the Saguenay River, known as Tadoussac, became an important trading spot to fur traders in the centuries that would follow Cartier's exploration. But it is possible that it was a trading location even before that time. In the saga of the Greenlanders, the natives of Vinland exchanged pelts for the Vikings' milk products and red cloth. The natives held this red cloth in high esteem, trading many pelts for small pieces of it. Could Tadu Sak have been a trading location going back to the time of the Vikings? Could an exchange between Native Americans and Vikings wearing woolen clothing and trading red cloth have given rise to the story of Saguenay? On Cartier's third visit, he had found what he thought were diamonds. These were harvested from a cliff near Stadacona that would later become named Cape Diamond. He also found what he believed to be gold on an island in the St. Lawrence River. He returned to France with barrels full of these precious commodities. But once back in France, he learned that the diamonds were simply quartz and the gold was iron pyrite. His voyages had failed to bring back anything of substantial value except for his detailed notes. The kingdom of Saguenay was never found Maybe someday, new clues will come to light to prove a relationship between Saguenay and Vinland. But until that day comes, we could only continue to wonder if Saguenay existed in some remote misty land, or purely in the dark recesses of the human imagination. <laughs>